Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at Pythagoras' theorem and how to find the shorter side of a right angle triangle. If you haven't already watched our previous video where we find the hypotenuse, the longest side, make sure you watch that first using the link above. first thing you need to be able to do is label the sides correctly. Now we went through this in the last video, so I'm just going to go through this very quickly. The hypotenuse is the longest side, which is always opposite the right angled triangle. So this is the hypotenuse. We're going to label this as C. The other two sides are going to be called A and B. It doesn't matter which one you label A and B, as long as C is in the right place. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can work out either A or B. Okay, so one of the two shorter sides. And remember to always use lowercase letters for lengths. This is Pythagoras' theorem. So Pythagoras' theorem states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So there's your c opposite the right angle and the a and b elsewhere. These are the steps for finding the shorter side. So first we need to label the triangle, first c and then a and b. Then we write down Pythagoras' theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We substitute the values into the formula. We rearrange the equation. We then solve the equation and you'll have your answer. And at this point, you just want to make sure that the hypotenuse is the longer sign. So we do a, a, a quick check, which takes two seconds at the end. Let's get started. So here we have our right angle triangle. We're trying to find the length x here. This is the right angle. The side opposite is the hypotenuse. We're going to call this C. The other two sides will be called A and B. And again, it doesn't matter which one you label as A and which one you label as B. The first thing you do after that is you write Pythagoras' theorem. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we have done step one, label. Step two, write Pythagoras' theorem. Step three is to substitute the values into the formula. So we know that a is x. So instead of a squared, we will write x squared. Instead of b squared, we're going to write the value of b, which is 8. So 8 squared and c is 10, so 10 squared. We know what 8 squared and 10 squared are, so we can work them out. So this is 8 squared is 64. 10 squared is 100, because 10 times 10 is 100. So that's step three. Step four is to rearrange the equation. So we want to make x squared the subject. So what we need to do is to get x squared on its own, we have a plus 64 here. We need to take that 64 across to the other side. So x squared is equal to 100. And then because we're taking the plus 64 to the other side, it becomes a minus 64. So 100 take away 64 is 36. So x squared is 36, which means that x is equal to the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is 6 centimetres. I'm just going to write 6 centimetres here. So we've rearranged, we've solved, and we've got x is 6. Finally, we need to check that the hypotenuse is the longest side. So this side was 6, this side was 8, and the hypotenuse is 10, which is still the longest side. So that seems like a reasonable answer. Let's try a couple more. Let's have a look at this yellow triangle. So first thing we do is we identify the right angle and the side opposite the right angle we're going to label as C because that's the hypotenuse. The other two sides we will label as A and B. Don't worry about which order you do this in as long as C is in the right place. Next, we write down Pythagoras' theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So, so far, we have labeled a triangle. We have written Pythagoras' theorem. So step three is to substitute the values into the formula. So a is 12. So a squared now becomes 12 squared b is y, so b squared becomes y squared, and c is 13, so c squared becomes 13 squared. 
Now 12 squared is 12 times 12, which is 144. Y squared will remain as it is. 13 squared is 13 times 13, which is 169. You can use a calculator if you need. Now we need to find y squared. Now to get y squared on its own, we need to get rid of this positive 144. So the way we get rid of a plus 144 is we minus 144. So if we minus 144 from this side, we get left with y squared. And if we minus 144 from this side, 169 take of 144 is 25. So we get y squared is 25. So to get y, we just need to do the square root of 25 which is five centimeters. So we have substituted the values, we have rearranged it, we have solved it. Finally, we need to check that the hypotenuse is the longest side. So y we've just worked out as five centimeters. This one is 12 and the hypotenuse is 13. The hypotenuse is the longest side. So we have done that check. Let's try one more. So let's look at this red triangle on the right here. So we find the, high, uh, the right angle and we can label the side opposite that as the hypotenuse, so C. And then the other two sides we will label as A and B. And then we write down Pythagoras' theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now this question is slightly different because you will need to use a calculator towards the end of this question. The value of a is z, so a squared is now going to become z squared. Okay, I like to put a line through my z so you don't confuse them with twos. b is 7, so b squared would be 7 squared. And c is 11, so c squared would be 11 squared. So if we simplify this a little bit, z squared plus 49 is equal to 121. So let's go back here. Where, where are we? We've labeled the triangle. We've written Pythagoras' theorem. We've substituted the values into the formula. So now we need to rearrange the equation. So to rearrange the equation, we need to get z squared on its own. So we need to get rid of a plus 49. So we're gonna to have to minus 49 from both sides. So if we minus 49 from the left, we get left with z, z squared. And if we minus 49 from the right, we get 121 minus 49. So that leaves us with z squared equals 121 minus 49, which is 72. Now to find z, we need to do the square root of 72. Now 72 is not a square number, so we will need to use a calculator. So the square root of 72 and then press the SD button to get it as a decimal. Let's go to two decimal places. So this would be 8.49 to two decimal places. Centimeters. Let's just write that down, 8.49 centimeters. And then if we go back here, we've rearranged, we've solved and got 8.49. Finally, check that the hypotenuse is the longest side. So this is 8.49, this is 7, and then the hypotenuse is bigger than both of them. So we have done that check. So that seems like a reasonable answer. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, if you do like it, please give us a thumbs up and leave any comments you have below. If you haven't already watched the video on um, finding the longest side, make sure you watch that and click the link on the screen right now. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.